as promised, in this lecture we're going to go back through the gastrointestinal tract and we're going to have a look at different problems that happen at every stage and we're going to have a look at how you can remedy those problems. So we're going to go first of all to the stomach and how would someone know if they had low hydrochloric acid? I have never met anyone with too much hydrochloric acid. Some people say, I've got too much acid. I say, how do you know? They say, well, it, keep, it keeps coming up. Well, that problem's not the acid. The problem's a little gate. Now, this little gate here is called the cardiac sphincter because of its relationship to the heart. And it's a muscle. And basically, it looks like this. There's the muscle. And when it's, when it's relaxed, it's closed. And when it tightens, it opens. And it tightens when you're eating food to allow the food in there. Now, if when the food's in there, it's opening, there's a malfunction. Why would there be a malfunction? If someone's really stressed out and all their muscles are tightening, can you see that? Little muscle will open. But one of the main reasons is that people are eating late at night. And let's have a look at the stomach when you're lying down. When you're lying down, the stomach's like this. And let's say the stomach's full of food. And because of gravity, that's what it looks like. And so what happens is it pushes, pushes against the cardiac sphincter, weakening it. So, so the two main causes of reflux or heartburn is weakening th the muscle through stress and weakening the muscle through having a large evening meal. Now I believe that in a well hydrated, well slept, well exercised, well mineralized body, that body copes with stress. But when a person's dehydrated, they haven't slept well, they're not eating nourishing food, they're, they're not handling stress. We all have stress. <laughs> And I don't think stress causes a problem, but it can be uh, the final thing on a whole lot of other little things that can cause the scales to tip. So how do you heal reflux? Have a breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, and tea like a pauper. What's tea like a pauper? Tea like a pauper would be a bowl of soup. Or tea like a pauper might be a banana. Or it might be an avocado. And if someone's quite hungry because they didn't get a good lunch, they might have two bowls of soup or they might have a bowl of uh, steamed vegetables with a little olive oil and Celtic salt. Those things digest quite easily. Or another evening meal that is light is a smoothie. A smoothie blended up can be digested quite quickly. So the other thing that you can do to help reflux is take magnesium. Now magnesium is a muscle relaxant. So magnesium will relax that cardiac sphincter so that it will close. So the dosage for someone who has reflux would be uh, 500 milligrams of ideally um, magnesium citrate, which is the most absorbable form of magnesium, and they would have that dose three times a day with each meal and also just before bed. So that's uh, 2,000 milligrams over the day. Now that's not forever, that's just until the problem heals. To take an antacid because a person has reflux, okay students, what is going to break the protein down now if the acid is taken away from the stomach? Because remember, pepsin will only work in an acid environment. So many people are causing digestive problems because of antacid. Yes, the antacid stops the acid and so it doesn't come up and burn, but what's going to break your food down now? And long-term antacid use is now showing that it's causing colon cancer because there's no acid or not enough acid in the stomach to break the food down. So then the food comes to the duodenum and trypsin and chymotrypsin that are supposed to finalize protein digestion can, has to start it because it didn't get started in the stomach. 
And they only started it, so it can't be finalised. So by the time this partially digested protein gets to the large intestine, extra bacteria has to be produced to try and deal with it, and that can cause us a breaking down of the colon wall, which can contribute to colon cancer. So let's move down to the stomach. Low hydrochloric acid. Low hydrochloric acid can happen because of long-term antacid use. Low hydrochloric acid can be a result of someone um, going through continual stress because when you're stressed out, your body does not produce the enzymes. I think we all know that. Also, um, so drinking with the meals, uh, stressed out at the mealtime particularly, and also eating all through the day. We should eat our meal and then leave poor old stomach alone. Let it digest the meal. And if you're feeling hungry between meals, you know what you do? You drink water. That's what the stomach likes between meals is water. One lady said, if I drink a whole glass of water, I feel bloated. So my answer to that is don't drink a whole glass of water. <laughs> drink a little bit of water. And then a few minutes later, drink another little bit of water. And if your stomach still feels bloated with that, well, sip on peppermint tea or sip on ginger tea. Both of those teas can help with digestion. But how do we boost hydrochloric acid? Well, we have a bit of tea that we sell, and I'm going to give you the recipe. And this tea has healed many a low hydrochloric acid. It is one part... Uh, one part dandelion. Dandelion is a bitter herb. We learnt about dandelion this morning in our herb lecture. One part gentian. Gentian is, is an incredibly bitter herb. One part licorice. And licorice is a herb that has an emollient and that emollient helps to, to coat the stomach and half a part of a very expensive herb called golden seal. And golden seal has a nickname and that nickname is king of tonics to all mucous membranes. Dandelion, gentian, licorice and golden seal are all roots and you need to boil roots. So the recipe, here's the recipe. So you buy these dried herbs and you put them all in a jar. You make up a whole jar. So the recipe is one teaspoon of this herb mix, we'll say herbs, and one teaspoon of ginger, fresh ginger. So the fresh ginger can be grated or it can be uh, chopped into small pieces. Two cups of water. And then that is a gentle simmer. So simmer for 10 minutes. The ginger certainly makes it more palatable because these three herbs are very bitter. And the ginger is a sweet bitter and the licorice also is a little sweet. It makes it palatable. Some people, when I give them that tea, they think I'm killing them. <laughs> and my, I said, there's one requirement when you drink this tea, smile. <laughs> Here's the dose. So the dose is, once you've made the tea, dose is a third of a cup hot just before the meal. So when you take that third of a cup of that tea hot just before the meal, the bitterness in the mouth gives messages to your brain to release more digestive enzymes. And when the hot hits the stomach, warming up the stomach, it also ensures a release of your digestive enzymes. In Psalm 104 verse 14, the Bible says, God gave herbs for the service of man. And that's what these herbs do. They revive, restore and regenerate your gastric stomach digestion function. That's what they do. How long should you be on it? As long as it takes. Now my son James, built like this, does bodybuilding for a hobby. He's a builder. He takes a bottle of this to work 
and all the guys on the workplace have a swig of it before they eat their meal because they're going to get more out of their protein and if they have more protein they'll get bigger muscles. <laughs> so there's James with his bottle of bitter herbs getting all the guys to have a squig <laughs> before they have their meal. I usually suggest that a person be on it for at least six months and remember that will increase your digestive um, efficiency. Remember it revives, restores and regenerates the functioning of the stomach. Now our, our cells have memory and one lady I know she was in a very stressful environment living with a drug addict and an alcoholic and she eventually left home with her children and she was living in a much happier environment but her stomach function still wasn't working. You see, her, her stomach function had got into a habit of, of, of working a certain way. So even though she was now out of the stressful environment, she was still having trouble with digestion. So what these bitter herbs do, they actually retrain your stomach. They retrain your stomach so that it starts to work. It starts to release the herbs. And of course at the same time, don't drink with the meals. At the same time, make sure when you eat meals you're in a happy environment. One writer said it like this, and I love it. It's, this, this author wrote this about a hundred years ago, but I love it. She said, cast off care and anxious thought when you sit to dine. It's good advice, isn't it? No controversial issues are to be discussed at the table. And if a child is um, behaving badly at the table, and I used to all, always do this with my children, out. <laughs> and when you only feed them at mealtime, they're hungry. And where do they want to be? And my son Peter, he's three, and there's breakfast, and he's got porridge, and he's got a little bit of honey in the middle of his porridge. He used to like to put it right in the middle and he liked things a certain way. And if the banana fell into the honey, wah! And if the spoon touched the banana, oh, I don't know, it was all this stuff. <laughs> Out! <laughs> in fact, I remember one breakfast, four times he had to leave it. And then when I hear the crying stop, I'd go to the door and say, are you going to be a good boy now? <gasps> no! Okay. <laughs> are you going to be a good boy now? <laughs> oh, you can come in. <laughs> you see, ne never raise your voice. Never raise your voice. It's just cause and effect. And it got to the point where I said, if you don't cry in the first five minutes, you can have carob powder on your breakfast. Well, that helped. That helped. Peter's a tiler now. He's Brisbane's top tiler because he's a, he's a perfectionist. I saw it at three in the bowl of porridge. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that's very important because no one can digest well when the child's screaming. Just put them out. Shut the door. Right? Just shut the door. What if they're out the door and they're chucking a tantrum? It's real easy. Bucket of cold water. <laughs> Surely not in this weather, best time. <laughs> best time. Remember what you've learned this week, wonderful tonic is quick cold. <laughs> they learn real quickly. <laughs> they're, they're smart. <laughs> so remember at the meal table, make sure it's a pleasant environment, make sure you chew well, make sure you are not drinking with your meals. And if you're still having a bit of trouble, try that, try that bitter, bitter tea. Pancreas. What if the pancreas is not working well? Pepsin and trypsin and chymotrypsin are what's called proteolytic enzymes. Now, proteolytic enzyme is the enzyme that breaks down protein. So proteolytic enzyme, proteolytic enzyme, proteolytic enzyme. And there are some herbs that are proteolytic enzymes. One is papain. And papain comes from the pawpaw. And the other one is bromelain. 
And bromelain is an extract from the core of the pineapple. Does that mean we should eat lots of pawpaw and pineapple? Well, I don't think they grow down here, do they? <laughs> and you'd have to eat a lot. But you can buy supplements that have papain and bromelain and bromelain in them. Now we have something that we sell in our health retreat. It's called Veggie Digest Aid. And I'm very cautious because sometimes you will get digestive enzymes that are coming from animals, sometimes from the pig's gut. Well, I'm not interested in those. But our Veggie Digest Aid has papain and bromelain in it and it also has some um, amylase, some other enzymes that have been created by the fermentation of certain foods. And remember I said anyone that has pancreatic problems should be on digestive enzymes. They should be on specifically the proteolytic enzymes. And the proteolytic enzymes are papain and bromelain and you can get some other amylases, proteases that have been created by fermentation process. So we come further down the small intestine. The small intestine, basically it's fairly liquid and most of the absorption has happened by the time um, you get down here. But as I showed you earlier, what can inhibit the process or really cause a malfunction in the process is a depletion of this thick turf wall, and this thick turf wall is made up predominantly of Lactobacillus acidophilus bifidus bacterium. Now you can get some um, supplements that have all manner of different types of, um, of bacteria that live in the gut. Your Lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidus bacterium are the two permanent bacterias, and all the others are made from them. The one that we sell in a quarter of a teaspoon has 5 billion bifidus and 5 billion lactobacillus. And you will find you can get a variety of those in most health food shops. I particularly look for um, the, the vegetarian uh, probiotics. So to heal that turf wall, number one, probiotic. Now the best time to take a probiotic is three quarters of an hour before breakfast because we want it to go all the way down there. And remember what I said in the morning, your pyloric sphincter is open. If you take it with the meal, the pyloric sphincter is shut and if you've got nice strong hydrochloric acid, it could actually successfully just about wipe it out. So we want your probiotic to go all the way down here, which it will do if you have it early in the morning. Number two, there are three food groups that are like kerosene to a fire on the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. One is the hybridized wheat, the other is dairy, cow's milk's excellent milk for baby calves and I do acknowledge that some people do quite well on the raw milk but the current figures are 60% of people are having trouble with dairy. One lady said, well what milk do you drink? I say, I'm weaned. I've got teeth and I eat food. You see, milk's for babies. We're the only creature that drinks milk past babyhood. Did you know that? And refined sugar. And I'm referring to the pure crystallized acid that's extracted from the sugarcane plant. These three foods are like kerosene to a fire on a, on a gut that is not working well. Number three. There are two herbs that contain growth stimulants that can stimulate rapid healing in the lining of the gut. Also, these two herbs are a bit slimy, and it has to be slimy, because our gut is slimy, okay? One is aloe vera, and the other one is slippery elm. And as the name implies, when you add water to it, it goes a bit slippery. Slippery elm means the powdered bark of the slippery elm tree. And the way to mix it is you put a teaspoon of water into the, sorry, a teaspoon of the slippery elm powder into the cup 
and then you pour in a little boiling water. If you pour boiling water into it and mix it, it'll go smooth. And then you pour a little cold water in and then you can drink it. If you pour cold water in, it'll go all lumpy. Now my son Peter used to like the lumps, but my son Peter was a bit different. <laughs> Most, most people don't like the lumps, but that's the trick. You pour the boiling water in and it'll go thickish and drink it quickly before it goes too thick or you'll be eating it with a spoon, but that coats and soothes the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. Now one sign that the gut is irritated is the person will be going to the bathroom a lot. I'll tell you the story of a man who came to our health retreat. He was Kenyan. He was 40 and he had ulcerative colitis. Sometimes it can be called Crohn's disease or irritable bowel, but basically they are all inflammation of the lining of the small and sometimes it can be the large intestine. So the different, different names imply different irritations in different parts, but you know, the same thing cures them all. So this is Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, um, disease, colitis, ulcerative um, gastritis, that basically the same thing will heal them all. So this man came and I looked at his, what, food he ate and guess what was his favourite food? <laughs> wheat, he ate a lot of bread, ate a lot of wheat cereals, he drank a lot of milk and he loved sugar. He was eating those three foods. He had just had a flare up so he was on anti-inflammatories and he was on cortisone. What does cortisone do? It just stops the body getting inflamed. Why is the body inflamed? Because of this. You see, it makes no sense. If you, it's like cu cutting the arm. Oh, it's all right, we'll just put a band-aid on it. Cut it again, just put another band-aid. Cut it again, just put another band-aid on it. If you don't turn the tap off, you're still going to be mopping up in the other corner. So at Misty Mountain Health Retreat, we gave him a double dose of probiotic every morning. We don't serve any of those foods. We gave him Slippery Elm four times a day. I gave it to him in the morning, I gave it to him in the middle of the day, I gave it to him at six o'clock at night and he had another dose just before he went to bed. First two days at Misty Mountain are juices. So every two hours we serve fresh fruit and vegetable juices. And I thought, mm, on the juices, he might really start going. Now, I have to tell you that he had a flare up a month before and he'd reduced his cortisone by about half. So he was on about 10 milligrams when he came to us and his anti-inflammatories he'd reduced by half. So the first day, at the end of the day, I said, I said, Joe, how are you going? This is all he used to say, good. How many times have you gone? Four. That was fairly usual. Second day, juices all day. How are you going? Good. How many times are you going? Four. I also think it was a little hard to talk about such things with a lady for him being Kenyan. Wednesday, we started eating. You see, if he'd said to me he's going 10 times a day, well, I would have just given him slippery elm every two hours and we would have taken him off the juices. See, you adapt and adjust according to what's happening. But because he was going all right, third day, we started eating food. By the end of the day, I said, how are you going? Good. How many times are you going? Three. Wow. I said, are you still bleeding? No. Have you got cramps anymore? No. Now you and I, we'd be jumping up and screaming, but he was very, very quiet. By the end of the week, I said, how are you going? Good. <laughs> how many times are you going? Two. Amazing. But let me tell you something else. Because he had not reacted badly on the juices, and because on Wednesday he was going three times, and because he was no more bleeding, and because he wasn't cramping, I made a suggestion. I said, why don't you try stopping your medication? Is that safe? I believe it was because his body had responded so well. There's no way I'd say that if he was still going 10 times a day. Can you see you adjust accordingly? 
Now, if he suddenly started to go 10 times a day when he stopped the medication, what do you do? Do you go back on the medication? No. You see, because he's at the retreat, we're watching him carefully. If he'd started to go 10 times a day, I would have given him slippery elm every two hours. If he went 15 times a day, I'd give it every half hour. It's very safe. It's very safe. Can you see the more serious, the more you do it? So he stopped his medication Wednesday. So Thursday in the afternoon I said, how are you going? Good. <laughs> Something to say. How many times are you going? Four. So he'd gone from three up to four stopping the medication, but hey, that's pretty good. And remember what I said by the end of the week? So that's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, twice a day. Off all his medication. Incredible. Incredible. I went, I did meetings in Sydney three months later and he was there and he was in the front low row smiling like a Cheshire cat the whole time. He was very, very happy. Very, very happy. Is it that simple? It is. How come he healed so quickly with the cells that line the gut are remade every three to five days? It's actually one of the easiest things to heal. And if someone's not healing, you put the detective hat on and find out why. Is it because they have exposure to mould? Is it because they're in a very stressful environment? You investigate. You investigate. And basically, you play with that slippery arm. If, you know, he's going twice a day. I said, well, you can start just taking the slippery arm 8 o'clock in the morning and before bed. And if he starts to go up to four or five times, what do you do? You just bring it back again. When everything's settled down, you try again. That's why you're the doctor. <laughs> if it works, do it. If it doesn't work, keep adjusting till it works. And what's the definition of insanity? Keep doing the same thing and expect different results. So that's what you do for any irritation of the gastrointestinal tract. Does it mean the person can never eat wheat again? Maybe they can. If they're off all their herbs and everything's happy, they can have half a slice. And the body might go, I can handle that. So they have another slice the next day, oops! <laughs> Going three or four times, a bit of cramping. What's the body just said? Please don't. So that it's something only you will know, only you can play with. One guy said, my body lets me have one slice of wheat bread a week. <laughs> he said, oh, I'm happy because I haven't had it for a year. So what does he eat? Rice. Rice is nice. <laughs> Rice, corn. All your gluten-free grains. Now there is a type of wheat that is not hybridized and it's a hybrid or just a field hybrid, it's a natural one, from the original wheat and it's called spelt. One lady said, how do you spell it? <laughs> spelt. <laughs> spelt and kamut. So you can try that and remember if it's made into a sourdough bread it breaks down the protein or the gluten in the grain. So interrupt. My friend who's celiac told me the other night when I said about spelt, she said celiacs are told that spelt isn't okay. For some celiacs, spelt isn't okay. okay. And for some celiacs, it is. <laughs> And as I showed the other night, it has a little bit of gluten in it, but it's a less complex protein structure. So some celiacs can handle, some cannot. I was giving a meeting in Sydney and a girl came in, she said, I'm celiac. I said, all right. She said, do you think I'll ever eat wheat again? I said, I don't know. You might, the body will tell you. If you do everything right, give the body the right conditions, you may be able to. She said, well, I can eat spelt. I said, well, you're not celiac anymore. Because <laughs> most celiacs can't handle it. But I've met many celiacs who can't eat it and they do everything right. Six months later, they can eat it. Once the gut is healed, once it's strengthened, it can start to work well. 
Well, what about the other condition of can't go? What about the other condition? We've just looked at overgoing, now we're going to look at undergoing. Well, many people will naturally start going more once they drink more water, once they start eating more fibre, once they start exercising. And once they start doing this, promptly answer nature's immediate call. Got that? <laughs> many people have developed the bad habit of not going when their body tells them to go. Now aren't we glad we can hold it because the plane's about to land, <laughs> can't go or you know this. But you know what many people use it for? They use it for, oh I'm on the phone to a friend and this story's getting interesting. Um, I'm watching something and I don't want to go. Um, I just want to finish weeding the garden or I'm just reading a chapter in the book and I, I don't want to. Many people use it for that. And if a person uses it for that, what happens when you feel to go is this whole area builds up and there's pressure. And so there's pressure on the anus. And if you do not go, it actually can't stay there. So what it does is it falls back into this area here. And the person finishes the book and the person finishes the phone call and the person finishes weed in the garden and then they sit and they can't go because it's all fallen back into there. And meanwhile, one of the main functions of the colon is to take water out so stools are formed, so it's getting drier, and it's getting harder, and we're getting cement and rabbit pellets. <laughs> and so the person says, I've got to get this stuff out, and then those horrible little bubbles start popping out, called hemorrhoids. If it ever gets to that, the easiest way to do it is to have an enema. Now a lot of people go, ooh, <laughs> an enema, it is so easy. It is so easy. All you have to do is put a little nozzle in there, put a cup and a half of water in there, it softens everything, then you sit on the throne, ideally with your squatty potty there, and it all comes out with ease. That's, that's an easy thing to do. But many people don't promptly answer nature's immediate call and their colon gets into the habit of not going when it should. And there's something else you can wear on your colon for a few hours a day and it's a castor oil compress. Castor oil is an oil that penetrates deeper than any other oil and it'll break up the congestion in the colon and help you to pass with ease. So if someone tends to constipation, it's very important that they invest in a $2 plastic stool from the Crazy Clarks. Do you have Crazy Clarks? $2 shop or I don't know, something like that. <clears throat> okay, those shops. Or they go to Bed Bath and & Beyond and invest in a squatty potty. So take the pressure off there. And start drinking more water, start wearing the castor oil compress on there. And if you weren't in the lecture that showed how to make compresses, you can Google Barbara O'Neill um, poultices and in the poultice lecture it shows you. But it's a few layers of cloth with castor oil on it, put on the abdomen, cover it with plastic, usually your clothes will hold it there. In fact, one lady who came to our program, she said, I used to have irritable bowel. And when I had irritable bowel, my husband, who's a doctor, came in and told me what he was going to do is going to be cortisone and anti-inflammatories, and if that didn't slow it down, we'll just open you up and cut that part out. Oh. It actually defies reason, doesn't it? Do you know, I'm not criticising doctors. They do the best they can. You know, poor doctors. People beat themselves up, and then the, they come to the doctor and, and think there's going to be a quick fix, but there actually isn't. There isn't a quick fix. <laughs> the body can heal itself. It's little by little by little it breaks down. It bears so long under abuse. And so it's little by little by little, given the right conditions, that it can start to build up and heal again. So this lady decided not to do what her doctor husband suggested. And she'd heard about the castor oil. So she started wearing castor oil compresses on her abdomen. And she said, I healed myself of irritable bowel with castor oil. 
So castor oil will penetrate deep and it'll help to ooze any inflammation, ease any inflammation. It will also penetrate deep and break up any lumps and bumps in the area if the person has constipation. You see, herbs are synergistic. They work with the needs of the human body. That's the good news. So let's come down here and, oh dear, there are those horrible little things called hemorrhoids. What can you do to get relief there? Ah, squatty potty, so you take pressure off them. But there are a few things you can do. You can soak a cotton ball in castor oil and shape it to the shape of your little finger and put it in the freezer. Now it will take about four days to freeze. And once it's frozen and it's, you know, solid, you can insert it and leave it in there overnight. And the castor oil brings great relief and to that hemorrhoid. There's something else you can do and that is cut a slither of um, aloe vera. Now I know that you're down in a very cold part of the country and cactuses don't grow very well here. But under a bush, in a corner near the house or in a pot in your, in your nice sunny veranda inside, you can grow it. And if you take a thick slab of the, car, of the aloe vera gel, about the size of your little finger again, and that free will freeze within about 12 hours, then that can be inserted. Don't take it out of the freezer and insert it half an hour later because, you know, you can't do it if it's all floppy. You have to make it firm. So there are two things that you can insert to uh, ease hemorrhoids. But again, once the colon starts working well and you haven't got the pressure there, the, the hemorrhoids should ease. Are there any questions? Because we have just got right down to the bottom end of your gastrointestinal tract. Yes? How long would you leave the castor oil compress on for? How long would you leave the castor oil compress on? Uh, about five hours. Uh, some people like to wear it overnight. Some people don't like to wear it overnight. Um, they might just put it down in their clothes, wear it for about five hours a day. And you can wear it five hours a day for about five days a week. And you can reuse that compress because it's not taking anything out of you, it's a vehicle holding the castor oil to go into you. If there's no more questions, I've got a little list here. Unless I, did I miss a question? Yeah? So can you just um, tell us how you know your digestive system is working? How do you know your digestive system is working well? It'll tell you. Bloating, you shouldn't bloat. Nausea, reflux, constipation, diarrhea, uh, all of those things are symptoms that things aren't working well. Flatulence, yeah. Um, flatulence is usually because a person's eating too fast, but a lot of people stop flatulence, stop wind and bloating when they stop the wheat. So it's a good idea for everyone to stop the wheat for two months. You'll have a slice of bread, it'll be out of your body in 24 hours, but the effect can remain for up to two months. Should we eat no yeast in our food? I don't. I don't eat yeast in my food at all. Do I eat mushrooms sometimes? If you don't have cancer and you don't have a yeast problem, to have mushrooms now and then, not a big deal. Yeast, oh another one. Does that include yeast flakes and marmite? Yes. I don't use yeast flakes. So how do you get the nice flavour if you're making like a nut cheese? You put salt and garlic powder and onion powder in and you can get a beautiful flavour. But I don't use yeast. What is the benefit of turmeric? You can Google that and find out some wonderful things but it's an anti-cancer herb. It is also a, the best anti-inflammatory herb. We have a capsule we sell at our health retreat. It's 800 milligrams per capsule, our turmeric capsules, and they're very potent. So very good if someone has inflammation, it'll get the inflammation down. I have fibromyalgia syndrome. I take pain relief, magnesium. I do exercise and walks. 
Best exercise is jumping. People get old because they stop jumping. Lady came and told me today she found a rebounder. Sorry guys, but she got it from the second hand shop, $15. It's already gone. <laughs> Maybe you got there too late. <clears throat> but the body must exercise, the body must have be full hydration. <clears throat> and you'll find that as the body starts working well, the fibromyalgia pain will begin to ease. I have firm, dark stools. A lot. What's the cause? Well, firm, dark stools can sometimes be dehydration. And if they're very dark, it can be because you're eating a lot of greens. If it's almost black, it can indicate bleeding further up, but I don't want to scare you with that. Sometimes it can just be you're eating a lot of greens. But one would also um, need to ask how often that person goes also to the toilet. Is oat bread better than wheat? Most people can handle oats. Sometimes severe celiacs can't handle oats. So basically stop the wheat bread, eat the oat bread and see what happens. Your body will tell you if it's okay. Is organic wheat bix okay? Is oat porridge okay? A lot of people love their oat porridge and if it's well cooked, it's digested well. It's one of the best breakfasts, but if a person's celiac, often they can't handle the oat. If they can't handle the oat, try millet porridge, pie rice por porridge, pie quinoa porridge. They're all very nice. If oat works well, use oats. You can get gluten-free wheat bix now. I don't know if you can get them in New Zealand. Yeah. Even organic wheat bix is the hybridised wheat. But apparently they make the wheat bix out of sorghum. They only ever used to grow sorghum for cows. And then they discovered it was gluten free. Now they're growing it for humans. <laughs> Can ADHD in children be managed with diet alone? Can it be cured with diet? Yes! Isn't that good news? What do you have to stop? <clears throat> I'll just press the recording. Stop the wheat, dairy and refined sugar. Often 50% improvement in those children. And it's easy today. You can get rice pasta. You can get... Um, you can also get cereals that are, are, uh, are gluten-free. You just have a look at the huge gluten-free section. Now that's an indication that a lot of people can't handle it. But be very careful with a lot of gluten-free mixes. They're often high in sugar. What are your thoughts on flax oil? Is it as good as olive oil and coconut oil? One of the problems with flax is it deteriorates very quickly, so you're best grinding it and eating it straight away. But flax oil can be used as a blood thinner. Flax oil can also be used to disperse tumours in the body, brain tumours. So I think for the average eating, the coconut oil or olive oil is best. Flax oil can be quite expensive, but it can be used medicinally. If you buy flax oil and it has a bitter taste, it's been destroyed. So because it's such a volatile oil, it's, it's very hard to get fresh. <clears throat> I recently read Parkinson's disease may ori originate from the stomach. Too late for us, but that could be done to prevent it. As you can see by what I showed you today, when every step's working well, you're getting the nourishment out of your food. And as I showed you earlier, when the gut flora is broken down and the glutomorphines get in, that certainly can cause brain problems. Missing intrinsic factor. Can anything be done about it? I would like to avoid the painful B12 injection, so would I. <laughs> so how do you restore the intrinsic factor in the gut? The digestive tea. The digestive tea, that those bitter teas, restores the glands releasing the intrinsic factor. And there's no need to have B12 injections. You can buy sublingual B12 tablets from the health food shop. Sublingual means they're absorbed under the tongue, so you don't even need the intrinsic factor. Do you know if people healed from autoimmune disease? Yes. Specifically Addison's. Do you know it does take a bit of work, but it's a matter of getting the body back into the right condition. 
I don't know if you've heard of a Dr. John Clark. He's an American doctor who gives meetings and he's got a lot of research showing how vaccines when you're young can actually cause autoimmune diseases when you're older. So there can be a whole lot of things that are causing the autoimmune disease disease autoimmune disease. Are eggs good for you? I have two a day. If the eggs are organic, they're, they're fine. Do I eat eggs? Well, no, I don't because I prefer lentils. But if you love eggs, you grow your own chickens and they're healthy, organic eggs are fine. How do you overcome B12 deficiency? I'm having monthly injections. All you need to do is get the sublingual B12, you need the digestive tea to revise your intrinsic factor and eat homegrown veggies, eat some organic root veggies. Can you see usually when a person has a B12 deficiency and they're having it continually, it means they're not making the intrinsic factor in their gut so they need to revive it with the bitter herbs. What kills parasites completely? You've got to clean up this bowel because they'll only live where they're getting fed. And what do they feed? They feed on waste. <laughs> they feed on sugar. But there are herbs that will kill parasites. Black walnut and wormwood, both incredibly bitter herbs. And also oregano oil. But you, um, you can buy them usually in a mixture from the health food shop. Is it safe to use Anna's Wild Yam Cream when you're pregnant? Absolutely. Anna's Wild Yam Cream boosts progesterone. And progesterone is the hormone that binds the molecules of the fetus to the lining of the uterus. So progesterone can prevent miscarriages. Does diatomaceous earth have any value in it? Yes, it does. Are you familiar with diatomaceous earth? It's, I think it's like a ground coral that uh, can be taken and also it can be sprayed on bugs in the garden and it basically kills their gut but it doesn't kill human guts. You can look at that. In regards to pancreatic enzyme, what are digestive enzymes? I think we covered that in our lecture, the proteolytic enzymes. Can thin, weak bones... Um, get strong again? Yes! Get the rebounder, but also push-ups. You need to do push-ups. You can do resistance on the rebounder because what strengthens the body is defying gravity. And nothing defies the gravity like jumping. But many people can't jump because of the jarring when they meet the earth. Get a little rebounder, trampoline. You got a trampoline at home? Just push the kids off. It's for the adults too. <laughs> the beauty of the rebounder is there's no jarring. And uh, it, it strengthens bones. Something else strengthens bones and that is the Anna's Wild Yam Cream will boost progesterone and progesterone boosts bone building cells. And your bone building cells are the cells that build the bone. So you can strengthen your bones. Time to go into training. Push-ups. Can't do push-ups? Do them on the wall. As you get stronger, do them on the floor. Do the ladies' push-ups. But go on your rebounder. You only have to do three minutes three times a day. Can dowager's droop hump be reversed? It can. Push-ups. You've got to start um, doing the push-ups and, and also strengthening the core because do you know the core, all your core muscles are connected to your spine so strengthen your core and also do exercise. You can go to a physiotherapist, they'll give specific um, exercises and stretches to do. You know the how, dowager's humps, that hump on the back of the... and it doesn't come overnight so it's not going to go away overnight. But little by little, you do what you can. Do you believe in the oil of the candies, paint for pain, nausea, etc.? I'm afraid I don't know that. Cannabis. Can oh, cannabis. Cannabis. Well, I was a hippie in a rainforest and I saw a lot of damage done by um, marijuana. What can help just as much as the cannabis oil is the coconut oil, and yet there's no danger with that one. 
And I've just been in Denver, Colorado, where cannabis is um, legal, and it's not a happy place. <laughs> Can you rid the body of arthritic pain? Yes! Isn't that good news? If you Google Barbara O'Neill, acid alkaline, you'll see the acid alkaline lecture. And with arthritis, number one, go on a highly alkaline diet. Lots of alkaline foods because arthritis is an acid, loves an acid condition. Start taking large dose turmeric, even two to three thousand milligrams a day of turmeric to, that'll get the inflammation down. And great ginger and put ginger poultices on the sore joints and start jumping because there's no jarring with that. It strengthens every... Do you know it is the only exercise that strengthens every single cell in the body? Because you know what you're doing? You're defying gravity when you go up, and when you go up, you're accelerating, and when you come down, you're decelerating. So the jumping up and down. And if you have a little rebounder in your house and your grandchildren visit, guess where they'll be? They know. Is there healing for peripheral neuropathy? Yes! <laughs> get on the rebounder and get the circulation improved. But also, cane pepper compresses. Cane pepper compresses on the bottom of the feet will bring the blood to the area and will feed the nerves and feeling can go back on the feet. One, one go might do it or it might need to do a few goes before it, it does, yes? With the cane compresses, could you, instead of putting the oil on the cloth and the cane people on the cloth, could you just like put the oil on your foot and sprinkle the cane people on your foot? You could put the oil on the bottom of your foot and then put the cane pepper on your foot, but what are you going to do then? <laughs> and then the sock's going to get oil oily oh, yes. and hard to clean. Yep, we've done it many times, so we've refined it. <laughs> What's the truth about artificial sweeteners? Well, some of those artificial sweeteners in the body, they're converted to formaldehyde. That's a little scary, isn't it? Someone said, well, what's worth, sugar or artificial sweeteners? And I say, well, how do you want to die? You know, they're, <laughs> they're both bad. What about stevia? Stevia is fantastic. It's just a plant. Some people say, oh, I don't like stevia. I say, why not? It's got a bit of aftertaste. You know, if you get a bitter aftertaste when you use stevia, you've used too much. It's unbelievable that you only use the tiniest little bit, and people can't believe that, so they use a bit more, and then you get the bitter taste. If you have just the right amount, it's a very delicate sweetener. It's very nice, yeah? What that, what's your views on xylitolis? Uh, xylitol is another sweetener that's from a plant that... Yep, you can use xylitol. Diabetic affects the pancreas and insulin. Does it also turn, in turn affect digestion? Interesting, with, um, with, the, with the pancreas, there are two organs that are released in... Sorry. There are, two, there are two hormones released into the blood from the pancreas. That's insulin and glucagon. And that balances the blood glucose levels in the blood. But the pancreas also releases these enzymes into the gut. So when the pancreas is not able to balance the blood glucose levels because it's not working very well, that absolutely can also affect digestion. So that's a very good question. It is true. You've got to revive pancreas. If blood and lymph are going, to, going through the pancreas, it's alive and it can be revived. What happens if you starve yourself of food or wait too long between meals? Does it really lead to muscle wasting? Um, if you're as big as me, it does. If you haven't got many stores, your muscles do start to break down if you're not eating enough food. Is there any level of sugar that's safe? Personally, I don't eat uh, refined sugar at all. And when I make my husband apple strudel or apple pie, I use... Uh, maple syrup or I use palm sugar. So there are sweeteners that you can use that are, are quite healthy. If you're a diabetic, you're best not using any sweeteners at all until your pancreas revives. And if you're conquering 
Cancer, you're best to eliminate all sugars until you've conquered your cancer. It's not forever, it's just until you've conquered it. Where does all the water we drink go? No, out of your urine. It comes out via your urine. I drink heaps and it makes no difference. Why is this please? I drink over two litres a day but still no difference. So um, remember... There is the bell not going. Why is the bell not going? Um, it could be in the habit of not going and maybe the person's not drinking, having enough salt with their water and maybe the person isn't... An, isn't having enough fibre. Now if the person's drinking adequate water and if the person is exercising and if the person is having fibre and it's still not going, it may need some herbs to revive it. And I just realised I didn't give you the recipe for the tea that will move the colon. We call this colon tea. It's one part Cascara, one part licorice, and th sorry, two, and three part buckthorn. This is the tea that we use at Misty Mountain Health Retreat. And what you do, that's not a very nice tea, what you do is you Put these three herbs, now that's a root and these two are barks. And whenever you've got bark and roots, you have to boil them. So you put that in a, a jar, there's your dry mix. You use one teaspoon of that to one cup of water and you boil it. And how much do you take? Some people need half a cup, some people need three cups, some people need two cups. You take it just before you go to bed and in the morning you will go. If you go too much, you probably don't need it. If you don't go with one cup, try two cups. If you don't go with two cups, try three cups. So you play with it. And some people are doing everything right and still not going. They need the herbs to revive and restore colon function. Why do I have gas? when I eat avocados and chickpeas. Well, maybe your body doesn't like avocados and chickpeas, so don't eat them. And try every couple of months, and you might get away with it. Try just having a little bit of chickpea. Try having a little bit of avocado, so you can get your body used to things. Are multivitamins good for you? What effect do they have on your system? I don't use them. I think food should be a medicine, and medicine should be a food. And a lot of vitamins are synthetic, so they're really not doing a lot of good. Does the food I eat have an effect on gastric reflux? You will know. <laughs> your body will tell you. The problem is, with medication, your body, you don't hear your body's voice. But... Um, I find that, that wheat can certainly increase gastric reflux. So you start the, you make the lifestyle changes, you change the dietary, you take the magnesium, you start eating most of your food at breakfast and lunch and just see what happens. What is the best way to regain bowel tone in a chronically constipated child? You have to have a very good look at what they're eating. Sorry, I'll just push the button on the reset. Stop the wheat, dairy, refined sugar. And uh, make sure they're drinking lots of water. If my children didn't want to drink water in the morning, I'd say, I'm so sorry. If you don't drink water, you can't have breakfast. There've got to be rules in the home. And children love salt. Give them a little bit of salt before every glass of water. So if, the, if you change the child's diet, and you uh, get them to drink more water and you get them to exercise. Just get a trampoline, remember? Just imagine what that's doing to that, that colon, it's massaging it. And if you still have problems, they may need to
be massaged with castor oil and if they still have problems mm, they mightn't drink that but you can try. So there is a reason but you're right they can get into the habit of it. Should we, ah oh, we're back to the first one. So that's all the questions. We've got two minutes to go if there's any more questions. Yes? Hot flushes. Is there anything you can do for hot flushes? There absolutely is. It's the Anna's Wild Yam Cream. We lectured on that last night. Now if you missed out on not last night's lecture, you can Google Barbara O'Neill and Hormones and you can see that on YouTube. Yes? Poor circulation. Poor circulation. <laughs> Start moving the body. The lymphocyzer is the most powerful. Also, you must keep your extremities warm. Don't ever let them get cold. If your feet get cold, you can uh, warm them up by massage or warm water and then into hot water. And then when you've, fit it, when you've heated your feet up, you've got to put possum socks on. Oh, if I lived on New Zealand, I think I'd live in possum. <laughs> I've got some possum socks. So put good socks on. Now, I, my husband calls me a cold frog. I get cold really easy. I go to great lengths. I make myself great big woolly skirts. This skirt's called my blanket. And I, when I knew I was coming to Invercargill, I put it in. And I've got leggings on and I've got woolen socks under in my boots. <laughs> So you, if, you know, especially if you're slight and you don't have a lot of padding on, you, you've got to burrow from the sheep and the feathers from the duck. You've got to go to great lengths to make sure you're warm. Perfect health requires perfect circulation. And perfect circulation means that you're warm all through your body. So keep your body warm, go to lengths to keep it warm, and also exercise. Exercise increases blood flow to the extremities. Well, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, I don't know what my favourite lecture is, but I think tomorrow when I talk about the brain, because I used to work as a psychiatric nurse and I didn't see people get better, but I see people get better now. So all week we've been talking about the body and tomorrow we go to headquarters, capital city of the human body, which is the human brain. So I look forward to seeing you at 11 o'clock here tomorrow morning where we look at rewiring the brain. And then in the afternoon at 3 o'clock where we look at uh, healing the mind and the 4.31 is safeguarding against depression. So thank you for your attention tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. <laughs>